welcome to this tutorial on the DevOps Workbench Express Edition. We're here today to kind of talk about how to use the DevOps Workbench Express Edition and how you can use it to actually do a web deployment. Um, as you'll see, there are a number of templates here. So we have four kind of prepackaged templates for you to use. Uh, we have the application deployment, we've got the Azure deployment, website deployment, and SQL package deployment. The one we'll be going over today is going to be the website deployment. And uh, I've already put one together, but just so you know, you can always go up here and create a new deployment. Um, what you would do is you would then take your environment check and you'd say, hey, I want to make sure that it's got the right operating system. Right? And then you can use one of our prepackaged templates which is going to be the website deployment is the one we're going to be doing today. Uh, it'll let you know here that these values are required and weren't supplied. So you have to go over here and say, hey, website name was not supplied. So you'll go down and say, hey, website name, I need to fill that in with you know something here. And then after I click out of that, it'll say, oh, I still have two more website directory and source directory. So you can sit there and you can see um, you know, that one or more children have those errors, etc. Um, but remember, this is just a template of a bunch of composite activities. So here's the templates, and then all the composite activities are down below that. So if we were to come down here and and uh, we were to go to um, one of the individual ones for uh, deploying a website. So in this case, um, we would create a website, or we create an app pool. In this case, you'll see that we have the app pool here as far as the Apple settings and then we also have the create a website in here as well um, so really it's just a composite of multiple activities to make up a template um, you can also do this there's some guidance where you can make a custom one as well if you'd like so with that let's get down to business let's not save this one and I'm gonna use one that I already have kind of ready and waiting so I'm gonna go to my my open and then I'm gonna go into my documents and I'm going to grab my hello web sample which is just that OS name and default deploy website with my uh, configuration already filled in so in this case I've got my host name um, and then what I want to check here as far as Windows or you know I can be checking that it's iOS or whatever this the OS name is that I want to verify whether I can say Windows data center etc um, up above here on most of the activities you'll notice there's two settings you can ignore the deployment errors which means I'm going to check for this, but I don't really care if it's there. I, I, you know, I still want to deploy it even if this doesn't match. Um, normally, we don't check that. Um, and then log deployment exception stack, stack trace. I usually want this on for most all of my activities, so I'll typically check that, and then uh, put in my host name that I'm going to be checking this on. Um, you will need to have uh, some of the uh, WCRED SSP or you'll have to have some kind of authentication to this box um, so that this EBT can run but that's all in the guidance and so be sure that you reference our guidance out on CodePlex and so here if you go out into to CodePlex so you go to VSAR DevOps um, you'll be able to find all of our guidance out here on VSAR DevOps CodePlex.com downloads and you can get to our guides here and I'll tell you more on how to do that but for the the use of this tutorial I'll just be going through uh, some simple examples here so we get down to the default deploy website now this this in turn says that I already have my build I've already got my build output in a format that I can just go ahead and take this copy it out you know, I have a, a deployment source directory that I'm going to be pulling from on my build location. So if I was to go over here and look at uh, Visual Studio and I was to go to my builds and I was to say, hey, this build that I've got that I did here and I open the drop folder, let's just take a look here. And I go into debug, web, and then I go into my bin. Here we go. So I think I'm going, oh, I'm just going build debug. So I just want those two, sorry. Um, so if I go out here and I go to my debug hello and I grab this there's my content my hello style sheet uh, my web configuration um, everything right here is going to be copied so again it's from that build location so you see the dot dot slash debug hello world web 
Um, so that's that deployment source directory that's going to pull from, and it's going to look at where that where that build location is. Uh, so let's see what that looks like on the target server. So I've already have it deployed out here, um, and it's hello world. And it just has a more information and it has additional kind. It's a simple web page. I think we took 10 seconds to make that at, at most. Um, but if you come out here to IAS, you'll see that on this box, the site, the site's here, Hello World 17. So as I, as I come back over and I look at my deployment, you'll see that the name I'm using for the website is Hello World 17. Let's switch it up and let's make it Hello World 18, just, just so we know we're doing something different there. And then we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll save that template. Ooh, let's go back into there. Yep, so we're Hello World 18 now, we're saved. Let's go ahead and delete Hello World 17. And let's go ahead and remove that. Yeah, we're absolutely sure. All right. So now if I try and go back out here to Hello World, page can't be displayed. All right, so there we go. We're set there. Let's go ahead and, and then work through a deployment. So I've gone through here and I filled out everything I wanted to. I've got, hey, here's my source de uh, deployment directory. Again, notice it's not taking, it's taking everything after that build number because I want to be able to do this as a continuous delivery. I want to be able to take whatever build comes out and grab that same content that's coming and push it to my website. So we'll, we'll show you where you select the build, the first part of this. Uh, from the actual deployment itself. This is how we get that continuous delivery cycle in. Again, I have my ignore deployment errors. This one I definitely do not want to check. And then log those exceptions. Absolutely, I do. Um, we've got RoboCopy that's doing our copying, so I'm just doing a, a quick slash E. Um, you can get more information on RoboCopy again from um, some of the guidance, or just look at RoboCopy, and you can you can use all those RoboCopy switches here. Um, .NET Framework runtime version, I'm using 4.0, you can be using 4.5, 4.5.1, uh, identify whatever you want to do there. Um, display name, this is just going to be the display name for what's done here. So that's def default deploy website. I could say, hey, this is my, you know, test environment uh, piece, and it's going to switch it up here, right? Test environment uh, website, I, you know. But whatever it is, I can say this is my, you know, super duper cool one right and so you can you can name it what you want to make it um, you know more relevant to you uh, you can add in your different environments and maybe you're going to deploy to the test one the dev one etc and you'll have uh, different deployment orchestrations for each one you want to do so that's kind of what that is you have all of the other compression expires my mat you have all the pieces that you need for a web deployment um, any additional website bindings, header, source header, address port. I am changing the port off the standard port. So I want to show you that I'm going to go to port uh, 1003 and I'm using HTTP protocol um, and HTTPS. I'm going to enable a th auto, a <laughs> anonymous authentication. Let's see if I can say that three times fast. Um, and so I've checked the box here. I haven't enabled the, the Windows authentication or anything, but you could. Um, I am going to back up the website so we do have the backup capabilities so that if you need to restore hello world 17 in this case I could restore hello world 17 I want and then the physical path disk pass of, of the website so we'll go out there and we'll take a look at see hello world 17 um, and I'll show you where it actually puts that on the disk itself so with that enough talking let's save it and let's close that out. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I reopen it just to make sure that I've got all my settings saved. I told I'm pedantic like that. Okay. There's that. Let's go out and look at the next thing we need to set up, which is target servers. I already have the target server I want to go to here um, that we're looking at right here. But let's say I wanted to add you know, another server called you know, server you know, 123. I'm just going to put something in there. We can also put the IP address. So if let's say if it was a, you know, a, another IP that you wanted to put in here, you could do that as well if it wasn't on a domain or you didn't know what the server name was, etc. And then if you want to double hop, you can add in a username and password. I will tell you that if your domain joins, you don't need to double hop. All you need is the server name. But these things are there if you need them. 
Um, again, just depends on what you're looking to do. So, with that, I've got my target box in here that I want to do. Again, I don't have any IP address or username that I'm going to use. I can close that. The next thing I want to make sure I've done is that I have connected to my team project. So I can go up here and I can change my connection or I can hit the globe down here on the bar. Let's go to source control, change connection. I'm going to be going to my server or service that I'm going to connect to. You see right now I have no TFS service connected and now I'm connected to that server um, on TFS so I can now pull up my builds. So now I'm ready to deploy to the server. So I can go ahead and click deploy to server. It's going to retrieve those builds from team project and pull them back to me. So I can create a package name called um, cool video deployment. There we go. That sounds like fun. Cool video deployment. Um, let's just say it's, it's version one. Um, the package XAML again, we're going to choose that XAML we had. So if I had like a test orchestration or a a dev orchestration or a UAD or a prod, I could go ahead and pick those in my package XAML, hit my target server for that one, and then go down and grab the build that I want. So here's the build that we just built. If you take a look, it shows all of my builds here, but I'm wanting the one right there, the last build I did. Um, we can also pick a local build. So if you're not connected to the server or service, uh, for TFS, you can go pick a local directory with the build already there and deploy that as well. So it, it works great with TFS, but it also is able to do it outside of TFS as well. So with that, I've got everything set up that I want to do. Just go back over here. My hello world, not working. All right. And let's go ahead and start this. It's going to go through five stages. So it's going to copy the build here. Then it's going to then go ahead and copy over all of our WF Executor stuff. And you can find more information on this, again, on CodePlex and our usage on what WF Execute is doing. And we're building this WF Execute for you and executing it uh, based on your orchestration. So all of that's going over and all these great tools and other things are going on. Now we'll remove those back off and leave zero footprint when we're done. Um, and we will literally leave leave the server in the same state we came in um, without an agent but the website will be there so it does take me a few minutes here I'm on a little bit slower connection but um, it will get there there we go zip 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 um, it's now deploying that and then there we are removing ourselves off of that target location. So it's really quick once we copy the build. Again, we had to go out to that drop location. We had to copy those bits over um, and move all that. But once that's done, we get this really nice report. And, and kudos to John Spinella on, uh, on creating a great report and David for all the activities. They did a great job coding this. So, so hats off to you and the entire team um, on the DevOps team for uh, all the hard work they did. So in this one, you'll see we did our, we did our copy. Um, here's some of our options. Here's what we did. Here's all the files. Um, there we are. We robocopied all that in. Um, you'll see that we successfully executed up on the top, but what I want to show you is our cropping's done. We deleted the files there, right? We deleted the old website, deleted the directory. Then we actually did our copy with our E there, right? So we executed that robocopy. We then put all of the new files there. We created the website, right? So that was that single activity we were doing. And then we executed all of it and said, hey, great, we're done. Successfully deleted all the old stuff and removed ourselves off. There's also a log location here that you can go to for that. Um, so you can get to it at any time and like see program data, Microsoft ALM Rangers, and you can get into all the deployments. So that'll show you the deployment log file. If you ever need to refer to it, it is on the local disk. So with that, there we are. We're deployed. How do I know we're deployed? A couple ways. So first thing I can do is I can go over here to my website. Hello World is now back working. Hey, check that out. Um, I can also go down and we can take a look at IES. And remember, we changed that website name to Hello World 18. There we go. And then on the physical disk, we were going to be under C. 
Hello World 17, there it is. There's my bin, content, hello, style sheet, web, all the stuff that you saw from that build that we did that I've dropped here. Now if I was to do another build, it would again pick up all of this content but not look at the build number that it's deploying to there. I do that when I select the build to deploy. So hopefully that all makes sense. You, you can keep grabbing different builds as you do your continuous delivery. You can keep deploying them and not have to change your orchestration. Now why this is important is that we can go into, once I have this orchestration done, we can go into um, TFS and actually with one of the pieces that come with the um, Workbench Express Edition comes the Deployment Explorer. And why this is important is from my Deployment Explorer I can see all my deployments that I've done um, for this project. And so you'll see the one we just did, and let's expand this out a little bit more so you can see it, completed just a minute ago. Um, we did this cool video deployment one, and I can say what my target was, um, who completed it, what package it was, but then I can even go up here to actions and I can view the target servers, I can deploy to servers, I can take a look at everything that was done here, I can go out to the, to the logs, etc., and, and go and, and view that. I can even redeploy again if there was an issue. Maybe my server was down where it was trying to pull the build or you know something happened. I can, I can go ahead and redeploy that um, one more time. But it's a great way to take a look and say, hey, what, what's currently out there on that server um, and then how long ago did I complete it? So again, it's a great way to get from kind of this build once deploy anywhere kind of sample where I'm just using these these target workflows um, to do it. So in this case I'd have a test orchestration, I'd have a dev orchestration, I'd have a UAD and a prod and I could change up all the things I wanted to do as far as you know if it was a test server I could say hey let's go ahead and run this TCM command and let's run our test cases against it. Um, you know we could do different things here to execute um, against those. We also have some control flow and some other things. I highly recommend you check it out, take a look at some of the other activities. But that's the simple uh, deploying a website with the DevOps Workbench Express Edition, showing you Deployment Explorer all in there. And, um, and hopefully you can go and take this, take a look at your sample, use the guidance online, and be able to deploy your own website with it. So thank you for watching. Please leave any comments out on, um, out on CodePlex. Uh, we really love the discussions. We love if you have issues. Uh, feel free to type them in here. We will get back to you and respond. Um, so please feel free to uh, feel free to let us know. And um, and oh, one last thing before I leave off: where do you download it? Because this is the guidance, but we've actually put it up on uh, Visual Studio Gallery, and there's a link right off of there to download the bits. You can also go in to Visual Studio Online and you can go up to here and you can say hey I want to um, I want to search online I haven't tried this yet but I heard you can search the gallery for DevOps and there we are perfect so you can also download us this way as well so again a couple ways to get to there a couple ways to download and um, and again please Vote, let us know what you think, and uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.